Hello everyone and welcome to this special AMBA and BGA webinar in association with Cortex on Education Without Borders. My name is David Woodtail, Director of Marketing and Communications here at AMBA and BGA. During the next hour or so we will be exploring how digital learning resources can enable universities to leverage their brands and grow reach way beyond traditional geographical constraints. And shortly I will hand over to Robin Gibson, Marketing Director at our partner Cortex, to introduce our panel for today and begin the discussion. Before I do, though, just to remind you that this webinar is being recorded, so if you do miss anything or wish to refresh your memory, you'll receive the full recording in your post-event communication within about a week. In saying that, we do want today's dis uh, discussion to be as interactive as possible, so there'll be loads of opportunities for you to ask questions to the panel towards the end. Just pop these into the question tab throughout the webinar, and we'll address as many as we can. I think that covers all the housekeeping from me, so without further delay, I'm delighted to hand over to Robin Gibson. Robin. Uh, thank you very much, David, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as David mentioned, I'm Marketing Director here at Cortex, and we're delighted to be working in association with uh, Amber on this webinar and indeed um, a number of other projects in 2022. Um, so for the webinar that we're going to spend the next uh, 60 minutes on, um, really three distinct, set, distinct sections of that. First of all, um, we're just going to introduce you to Cortex and how Cortex can really fit in with your MBA program and your business school. And I'm going to invite James Gray, who is founder and CEO of Cortex, to take you through uh, that. Uh, then I'm delighted to um, welcome Dr. Diana Limburg from Oxford Brooks University, who is director of the Global MBA there, and who's just going to take you through um, how that MBA program has been set up how it has really reached um, all four corners of the world and how Cortex has been a key part of that in terms of providing um, digital resources for students to um, study from and interact with. Um, we then move on to our introduce Andrew um, Bates, who is our product director here at Cortex, who's just going to talk you through how simple it is to embed ebooks into uh, your teaching and learning on your, on your courses. We're going to have a short Q&A um, to wrap up with so you can ask the uh, panelists uh, questions anything you've got and then we'll just um, finish off at uh, three o'clock we won't go over that time so we're just looking to start with a poll or a couple of polls uh, just so we can understand the extent of um, e-textbook usage within your um, programs and also how those uh, e-textbooks and um, digital resources are actually funded for your students so um, David are we going to pop those polls up Absolutely. So I've launched the first poll. Um, does your MBA program fee include the provision of textbooks? So the options are yes, printed books, yes, printed and ebooks, yes, only ebooks or no textbooks provided. So I'll just leave that up for a couple of seconds. OK, just I can see that there's a few more people still to vote, so I'll just give it a couple of seconds. So I think you can see the results there on your screen. 33% uh, said yes, printed in eBooks. 33% said yes, only eBooks. And 33% said no textbooks provided. Awesome, thanks for that, David. And then poll two. That Eurovision song comes first. I... <laughs> okay. Okay, so question two is, what is the extent of ebooks use in teaching and learning on your ABA, MBA programmes? So the options are all textbooks are ebooks, over half, less than half, or none at all. I'll just leave that for a couple of seconds. I can see a few people are still voting. Okay, I'm just going to close that just now. And you can see there that 25% are saying that all textbooks are ebooks and 75% are saying less than half. Excellent, David. Well, uh, so what I'll do is I'll hand you over to James now, who can start to tell you why that uh, um, number should be 100% free textbooks. So away you go, James. Thank you, Robin. If you can move the slide on. Yep. And again. Um, 
Yeah. So w w welcome everybody and uh, thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, go through this webinar with us. Um, basically, I've, I've been in the game of working with universities for some 25, 30 years now in, in content supply, mainly dealing with academic libraries. So from Stanford to Harvard to, to uh, Hong Kong, Moscow, uh, down to South Africa. And you know, thousands of universities across uh, you know, hundreds of countries. And the, the part that's really interested me is the evolution of content supply from just access to and discovery of content through to actually the deeply immersive learning component of, of actually utilizing content online in the context of study alongside a course. Um, we really started the Cortex business back in 2012-13 to really focus on doing exactly that and create that online study experience um, that really mirrored what people used to do in an analog fashion. And we, we become from that small base, the sort of the, the, the leading personal study platform, um, working with universities in the UK and overseas. Um, we enable students to have access to the required learning materials and be able to study anytime, anywhere. And in this increasingly uh, digitally enabled world, that's becoming ever more important. Um, but most importantly, as a part of that process, connecting students with their academics and their peers to facilitate collaborative learning. Um, but then the, the, the really interesting area of development has been the utilization of the data that comes from that engagement in terms of supporting students and being able to understand content utilization, study patterns and behaviors, informing pedagogy. Um, and, and course and, and content selection. So next, Robin. Um, we're now uh, supporting some 2 million plus students at over 100 UK universities and many more overseas. We used in around 200 countries around the world um, by over 2,500 universities in total in some shape or form. Um, we basically aggregated some 2 million ebooks from four and a half thousand publishers, including all the, the, the mainstream textbook publishers that you'd be familiar with. And then it's all about putting a layer on top of that content to enable the engagement with it. And it, it, it's all around improving a student experience and supporting progression through a course. Robin? Where, where we really fit is it's about this learning experience layer that sits on top of the virtual learning environment, is embedded into the virtual, virtual learning environment, as well as embedded into the library. And it, it, we, we're able to facilitate the big difference between the VLE and, and Cortex is the VLE is about the course administration and setup. We're an individual personal learning account for each student through which they access and utilize the content for that course, engage with it and study and, and effectively from that mechanism, get the best from the content and communicate and collaborate with their peers. And then uh, across that, we're effectively supporting different workflows for students, for academics, for the library, for uh, university leadership and administrators. And once a student has their personal account, it's then all about uh, personalizing their experience around that content. And Andrew will show you some of this a bit later, but a single sign-on route to the content through the virtual learning environment. Um, and then effectively, I'm the student, I can now, set things up in any which way I like. I can search full text search across all the content for the course. The content can include the textbooks, it can include video, it can include the, uh, the, 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 the course guide, module ham books, et cetera. Anything and anything that, that, student, that, that the uh, individual academic or the institution wants to include in that content setup. Likewise, that can link through into the library and facilitate access to content via the library as well. But it's the personalization that becomes ever more important. And again, Andrew will take you through some of that shortly. Thanks. 
Um, as a business, we're, 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 we've got lots of different types of institution who use the platform. And you know, from, from some you know, big, big business schools through to, to major Russell Group institutions, through to uh, you know, all different types of, of university. But within there, um, there's a really interesting mix in terms of both UK and overseas. I mean, the last two years have really just shown um, a massive change in thinking around the provision of materials as part and parcel of the course, but not just the access to actually how are they then integrated more effectively into the course and utilized by both the academics and by uh, the, the students themselves. Um, in terms of business schools, we, 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 we work with a, a, a host of different schools, both uh, in the UK and overseas. And um, generally speaking, the MBA programs have been the most advanced in really switching to the utilization of, of digital content and then working to begin to really integrate that into the teaching and learning process. And you'll hear a little bit more about that um, from, from Oxford Brooks very shortly. Um, again, really intriguingly, what we're seeing now is this, this very broad utilization. And so I, I think that um, on a general basis, uh, Cortex is being used in over 200 countries and territories. Um, about 60% of our usage comes from the UK, but 40% is the rest of the world. If you take any institution, it is now about, to, to, the, to, the, to the point of uh, study without borders, it's now about attracting students onto programs, um, regardless of where they are. And effectively creating this, this opportunity to reach students and support them in a far more effective, more cohesive way, wherever they happen to be. Very importantly, if you move to the next slide, it, the platform then gives you the opportunity to really understand engagement with that course through the utilization of the course materials. And we can provide data across anything, down at the module level, uh, listing the students on a specific module, um, looking at the engagement around a specific assigned task, reading this, doing that exercise. Um, this can be basically split down into time frames. You cross-reference this down to the individual student and a specific piece of content. So um, a really versatile mechanism of being able to understand how the course is engaged with, how the content for the course is engaged with, and very importantly, how students are actually navigating through it and utilizing those materials. So if you look at the next slide, Robin, um, it, here is just a, one example of being able to do a deep dive on any particular piece of content. So here you can see the book, um, we actually, can segment out now the utilization of that content by chapter all the way down into individualized learning objects where those are listed. You know, heat map of activity around every single page within that content. And then the individual search terms being utilized as the students navigate through it. Now, the really interesting part there is, is then being able to map that back to uh, students on a particular module and then understanding from that um, the, the respective levels of engagement, the learning journeys that they're going on, and then actually the, the annotations and notations that they're taking. And it can really uh, help inform pedagogy, help inform content selection, and an understanding of the journeys that students are taking. So very, very versatile analytics capability coming from that engagement. I think with that, um, a quick intro that was a quick introduction to us, what we do, where we fit, how it all works. Um, and I'm going to hand over to uh, Diana Limburg, who will walk through um, uh, their experiences at Oxford Brooks. Diana, over to you. Thanks very much. Um, I'll just share my slides. I think it should be that one. Yep. Can you confirm that you can see my slides? Thank you. So yes, thanks for the opportunity. And it's, it's a really good 
um, to be able to share our experiences. So what, what I'll briefly do is just introduce um, the Oxford Brooks Global MBA, how we operate, and then talk about um, how and why we're using the, the Cortex platform for our students. Yeah. Right. So just to start with about the, the Oxford Brooks Global, a, Global MBA program, um, we're a blended MBA program um, since 2014. I'll explain later what I mean with blended. Um, but we've been in the online MBA market since 2001. So we are, we're quite uh, familiar with online education. It's not just something that came to us um, because we had to uh, due to COVID. It's the Brooks Global MBA is a part-time program and it's just fully designed from the ground up very purposefully to accommodate um, globally based managers and, and professionals. So they're all experienced people, but they can be based everywhere. And unless something odd happens, they are all our students are fully employed, often in, in very busy jobs. The programme works with two six month teaching sessions. So we sit outside the, uh, the normal academic calendar to again to accommodate our very specific audience. And the blended element there is that we offer two study modes for pretty much all of our modules. So any module can be studied online. Um, and when we do online, we do that in four 11 day seminars that are about three quarters asynchronous with some live content um, alongside it. And that's very much um, designed like that so that students can engage largely asynchronously because they're studying alongside their jobs. Alternatively, for the same modules, uh, a student can opt for an on-campus block week delivery. So of course, with this sorts of audience, um, teaching in, in weekly sessions is not going to work. So they would come on campus for a six day period, consecutive days, starting on Sunday morning up to Friday, um, and that's it. It's just important to really have that in mind that they are the same module. Um, it's just that some students take that module online and other students take that module on campus. And the final thing to just briefly mention are the program values of connect, collaborate and create. And that's important in this context because, you know, in the context of talking about why Cortex, because this it's not a sort of self-study when they're doing it online. We are connecting the students to each other. We're connecting the students to the university um, and making a big effort to also connect their um, work practice to what we're doing academically. It's a collaborative approach to learning, both when they're coming on campus, but also when they're studying on, online, with a huge emphasis on a sort of creative problem solving, can do approaches and, and an um, entrepreneurial perspective. Second bit of the introduction, again, very sort of briefly, um, I already started talking about the student profile, busy managers and professionals, literally based uh, around the world. So we have no on-campus students um, and they are in the North America, South America, Australia. It gives really interesting time zone issues when we're doing our um, real-time online delivery, but otherwise it's actually a real great benefit from the program because students engage with others across the globe. The students come from a wide range of functional backgrounds and job roles, um, locations, types of industries. Again, that's all brought into the learning experience. They're very experienced, average 13 years. And also that's then also reflected in the average age of our students, uh, that which is, which is 37. We've got a really great gender balance. And just in terms of, you know, how big are we? The, we take two annual intakes of around 50 to 70 students. It varies, of course. So at any point in time, given that we're a part-time program, we've got around 300 active students 
on the programme, slowly going through it. Now, how does that then work? And, you know, where does Cortex come in? So as a blended programme, we've got a massive challenge in ensuring that independent of how any student navigates the, you know, that selection, that personalised selection of which module will I study online and which module will I study on campus? So, you know, traditional on campus, online, um, and they make their own personal mix. So some students will, maybe they have to, they don't have the option to come on campus. They might study most of their modules online and might come and visit us just for the one on-campus module. Other students might, it might be relatively local, but we've had students from Canada doing this. They come and study on campus whenever they can and just do some modules online and any possible in between there. So these students all have, they're all doing the same MBA, they're all doing the same modules, but some do more online and some do more on campus. So it's therefore really important that they have a sort of a parity of experience between those. So how do we do that? On the one hand, there's the whole sort of organizing element of that. So we've got a across both modes, shared program values, we have a shared pedagogy, it's the same tutor team that deliver online and on campus, it's the same support team, and I'm leading both of those. But the other really important element in that is that access to learning materials, which should be the same wherever students are and whatever mode they're taking a module in. Our virtual learning environment is, of course, central in that. And of course, the online library is important. But it's really, you need more in that sense that, um, you know, in terms of particularly ensuring that textbooks are fully accessible, doing that through the library is, you know, particularly when we first started it, but still, at the quantity that we needed is just not um, feasible. Um, and when we first started this, we, we actually were sending out things uh, physically, and that's just really expensive. It goes to places in the world where delivery might just not happen. There might be issues with um, um, import duties and whatnot. And if we ask students to buy things locally, again, they might not be able to get their textbooks locally. So it's much more cost effective and easier to deploy if we actually do the core reading through the core text platform through an ebook platform so that students wherever they are and whatever type of uh, whichever modes they study in have that same level of access so how do we use it so when they start and the, and i think it's I'm partly saying this because it just sort of to talk through the practicalities of it. So in their induction, so at the moment we are just starting one again, a, uh, a list of new students is sent to our uh, Cortex contact and they will then send the um, sign up details to the new students who then from then on will be able to access the books that we make accessible to them. That's then done, so for each module they take, they get one or two ebooks um, per, per module. And that makes then 18 textbooks. I've just, I, I looked at the statistics that they, the team provided. So a total of 18 textbooks across their program and a real good benefit of doing it through Cortex rather than through the library is also that students own that book in perpetuity. So their access to core text is not linked to them being a student on the program. Once they've got it, they will, they will have it forever. At the moment, two of those uh, textbooks are custom books. Again, I wanted to mention that just in case people think, oh, you can only go for published books. Nope, you can do all sorts of things, including um, custom books, but all, all sorts of other content as well, if you want it. Um, and so I did the 
adding up. So for the last teaching session, a total of 650 books were added by students to their core text um, reading. We do do this on um, an access through the VLE basis. So the students don't get all their textbooks in one go at the start. They will, um, and that's partly because we don't really know at which pace students will go through it. But when they've signed up to a module, at the start of that module, they will be able to start accessing their, um, their core book and add it to their um, Cortex bookshelf. So we've got it integrated with Moodle um, because, you know, particularly with distributed students, it's good to have a, a standardized access route and it is really good that that integration has been, been able to be to happen. It works really well. So that's from the student's perspective, um, just a bit about how it works from our perspective. Um, you know, one of the things that's worked really well is just is actually that relationship with Cortex. If we need something, um, we get a response really quickly and really adequately. And that's both the, you know, the administration team in there working with new students, if there are any issues, um, but also, you know, from my perspective in terms of being kept up to date with new developments, etc. Um, so the, the administration team, for example, at the start of each, um, so before each new teaching session, the admin team asks all of the module tutors, is there anything new in terms of your reading lists? Um, if we want to change something, we can just quickly go to the, uh, the Cortex, our contact, co co Cortex contacts, um, <laughs> and they will just make the changes that we need. So we, we can then get sort of, um, quickly get prices, et cetera. We've also had really good training um, throughout um, and that included and um, somebody from, you know, I think it was Carlos coming to a, a few times to come to a, a, an away day of the tutor team and just talk through the, the, the things that we can do with, with the platform, new, new items and how it can be more um, embedded within the overall teaching experience and particularly also around the um, analytics. And the other thing is just the amount of support that's available and how responsive it is, and which is also from, again, a, a distributed um, student body perspective, incredibly important that it's really easy to, if you've, something isn't working for you, that you can immediately get um, a response in terms of, you know, what, what can I do about this, what's going on? And when at some point due to a change in the platform, we had a whole load of confused students, nothing, you know, it wasn't Cortex's fault, but it was the students that were confused. They very specifically for us then made some video materials to help our students with that transition. And then that's the sort of responsiveness that, that really helps us to, to ensure that this works. We are using some of the analytics. That's the third way of using it. Um, the administration team uses it to check student engagement uh, and participation alongside the reports that we get from VLE. So it's just really helpful to see um, for them you know, what books have been accessed and, and when. Sometimes it's about, you know, we've not heard from the student for a while, what's going on. Um, tutors can also, some tutors have done it at some point, you know, um, and particularly around you know, soon after training activities. So looking at which part of that core reading is actually engaged with, when is that done? So for example, just that sense of how, to what extent are assessment activities driving the access to, to the, the core book? And if that's not in a way that the module tutor would like, then they, could, they can spread out the uh, assessment activities or actually emphasize more to students, hang on a minute, you collectively seem to be skipping this part of the book. You shouldn't because it's really important for this part of the curriculum. And myself um, and, and others sort of in terms from a program management perspective, 
I've been looking at patterns in, in engagement and activities because we, we design, you know, the, the way we do the online teaching in particular around um, assumptions around when our students are able to engage. We think it's weekends, we think it's probably evenings, but by looking at the engagement with materials, one of the things that we found were, it, A, it, it varies per modules, but for example, Tuesday seemed to be a really good day for online study. Um, and that sort of, you know, again, helps to make some decisions in terms of how we design learning activities. That's just a little example, because, you know, when the um, pictures were just shown of all the analytics you can do, we've, we've really been engaging with that. Final slide, what could we do more of? Yes, we're doing some analytics, but it, more generally, the university is using more learning analytics, and it's very clear to us that both you know, academically and from an admin perspective, that we could do much more with it because there is some really good analytics available that could help us to understand the student experience better and adjust what we do to their experience. We're also already working on providing a wider range of learning materials through Cortex. Um, so, you know, wh where we've primarily been using it for uh, the Cortex books, an awful lot of other things, for example, things like module handbooks, other reading can also be provided, which would again help with further leveling that platform of access and make it into a better experience. And that links to that third point, because we've not really driven much on the embedding of the interactive features. So things like annotations and students, you know, um, engaging with each other around particular content. Um, and that's certainly something that we are um, looking to use better. And that was it from me. Over to you again, Robin. Thank you, Diana. That's uh, excellent. Really appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, present how you things are done at Oxford Brooks. Um, very exciting. And particularly just picking up on that last bit of, um, you know, we're not just talking about ebooks and e-textbooks, increasingly we're talking about the integration of other content into one platform so students can find everything they need for their course and their module within that one place and within that smart environment. And I, and I just want to invite Andrew Bates now um, from Cortex, who's having a few internet problems, so he's actually switched to mobile. So, um, you know, not, not everything's great in the world of, uh, of cyber presentations, but we can, we can always manage. So I'm just going to share my screen again and run the slides for Andrew, who will, uh, who will talk to them. So uh, let's just... Uh... Great. Thanks, Robin. And I uh, just want to do a double check. You can hear me okay, given my issues I've been having to date. We can. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, Andrew Bates, head of product. And I just wanted to start by saying um, it was a great uh, presentation by Dr. Lindbergh in terms of just explaining the day in the life uh, kind of setup of, of a implementation of Cortex. And what I wanted to do is take you through some of the strategy and key, key capabilities we provide to our customers um, and how, how we go about kind of putting that together to, to, to really illustrate how, how easy it is to embed ebooks into teaching. So the first and foremost thing I wanted to kind of come up with was a few statements around kind of where, where we are in the state of, I guess, the situation with textbooks and e-textbooks e uh, specifically. So uh, textbooks have been used for, for teaching and adding value to the teaching and learning process for hundreds of years. Uh, they've pri primarily been on the print medium. And that's, you know, been very useful and extremely helpful, obviously, in communicating information to and conveying information for students to, to comprehend. However, you know, the insight into that interactivity and connectivity to the textbook and to the teaching um, was kind of done at loose ends. With e-textbooks, I think one of the things you'll have seen is that you can collect analytics and information um, from the engagement around the readings and assignments. So these, these types of new capabilities with this medium uh, on the digital platform being able to provide better insight and curation and, and capability to the, the book itself is something we're very focused on and driving to make it easy to just not only embed and adopt an e-textbook for teaching as opposed to a print textbook, but then drive that into the further capabilities um, you can do from a teaching process uh, with the students on those textbooks themselves. 
So next slide, Robin. So, so an example of that is first and foremost, kind of the things we want to do in terms of uh, being able to provide visibility into what types of materials and contents available on the Cortex platform. So as mentioned, there's over 2 million books to access. Um, some of the things we're doing is working with um, other ways to provide discovery and adoption of the content that is available in the e-textbook format and giving academics opportunity to actually take those um, textbooks out and inspect them and determine if that's something they want to adopt in their teaching and learning or continue to use the ones that they, they're currently uh, lecturing from. Um, of course, we work with institutional infrastructure. Uh, I think you saw some examples and commentary around how that we can work with um, institutions to provide library support for acquisition, then integration into VLEs and other environments like reading list systems. So we're kind of supporting the overall ecosystem as, as that discovery and adoption process happens and then provide various formats and scenarios um, of content in addition to the textbooks for students, such as video content or uh, custom content specifically to your teaching process. So discovery and adoption of books and then being able to make that available to the students on their bookshelf is something we're, we're capable of doing and what we do with a lot of our customers today. Next slide, please, Robin. In addition to that, then once it starts, you know, once a book is, is available and accessible, there's digital tools we're providing for planning, curation, and assignment uh, off of the back of that textbook. So an ability to digitally communicate the module information for a, pres uh, for a session or for a course or module uh, from the Cortex platform alongside the book content in the textbook, schedule readings directly from the book or around a weekly schedule so that you're embedding the digital textbook, the e-textbook into the communication process for the students. So it's very succinct of being able to click on a link, for instance, and then drive right into uh, assigned materials for reading. And in addition to that, providing additional uh, materials into that platform in the same process and workflow. So planning them, planning out the, the, the sessions and communicating on, on the Cortex platform, being able to curate um, the specific readings and content that is valuable to the, that plan and then assign specific things from week to week basis or tools and technologies that we provide uh, for institutions and for the teaching process. Next slide, Robin. And then as that, that information is communicated, um, we would want to be providing the ability to, uh, sorry, Robin, I think you may have skipped one over. There we go, thank you. Um, as we provide, as we provide that information and, and, and share that with students and it works out through the year, we wanna be able to provide a closed loop feedback loop around the interactivity and engagement around that content. So information on the analytics as, as discussed earlier in terms of our students reading the assigned materials, what is their time spent reading the assigned materials, but then also allowing um, academics to gauge whether or not the materials are conveying the information necessary. So comprehension validation with things like question bank, and being able to link questions directly to that each e-textbook, e as well as be able to um, take the, the question that's been linked to the e-textbook and then validate you know, from a student perspective if they have it accurate or not, if the information was conveyed accurately, and an assignment of that information in line with the other types of readings and things along those, sort, those lines. Next slide, please, Robin. <clears throat> Beyond the, uh, in, on the same topic of engagement and assessment, then we, we also provide the ability to have casual discussion and group uh, information shared amongst the module uh, members, the roster, the class classroom in, in associated with the module. So conversation can flow beyond just formal means. If necessary, students can go peer to peer. Um, you'll see that is a capability that's uh, you know, important uh, to learning. Um, obviously, being able to discuss topics and learn from each other is, is part of the overall learning process. And then a dashboard for academics to understand kind of how things are progressing as they're teaching through the session. And finally, for students, um, you know, obviously, uh, we're talking about embedding it for teaching, but the, the complement to the teaching component, obviously, is the learning and studying components. And we provide a bunch of tools around the, the textbook and the e-textbook for students to be able to you know, take rich notes in line with the text and organize those notes via workbooks um, to be able to uh, handle peer collaboration through those discussion groups I mentioned, and even be able to self-assess information to organize their thoughts and information, possibly pose 
uh, questions, study study sheets, things like that that they would do for preparing for exams or or dissertations or um, assignments in final final grading. So it's all about studying and, and capabilities around that e-textbook and setting that up for for the student to have success. And then lastly, um, you know we we're 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 building technology and providing technology around uh, additional capabilities for translation um, and translated reading. We know that there's a group of of uh, cohort out there that that uh, English is not the first language, but we're predominantly providing English textbooks, um, and we're providing tools and technologies um, to be able to supply additional uh, options for students to learn in in native language uh, off the basis of uh, published English textbook. And that's uh, that's kind of the the run through of what we do in in a minute, and uh, just hopefully that was helpful. Robin, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. That's um, a very, very thorough run through. Um, I think what I'd like to do now is just invite our panelists, um, James, Andrew and uh, Diana, just to take a few questions um, on the presentations that have, have just been made there. And um, Diana, one of the first ones that uh, struck me as you were presenting was how, how you got to where you've got to, as it were, because traditionally uh, dealing with universities, obviously business school is a little bit different, and MBA programs different. It's oh, it's books, therefore it's library. But I got the sense from your presentation that actually um, you as an MBA program had sort of grabbed hold of this and have shaped it for the needs of your program. Yes, that that's correct, and it's I mean it works in all sorts of ways because to us the. You know, the, the provision of those learning materials and those core materials is is part and parcel of our relationship with the students. And it's um, if we handle that at a program level, it makes it much more flexible to um, really respond to the needs within the program, both from a tutor perspective and from the, uh, the student perspective. So, yes, we've we've really uh, we've we've done that um, directly, not through the library. Thank you. And a question to James, um, from just what Andrew was presenting there and um, the way you positioned Cortex as that uh, learning environment layer within the VLE, it, it, it feels to me that, that uh, Cortex is evolving, you know, a, a one-stop shop for all content needs for, for students wherever they are in the world. Can you just comment on that? Yeah, sure. Um... <clears throat> I think it's it, it it's more about um, a, a single interface to to actually engage with and consume the content. You know, we we we're not and never will provide or supply everything. So, for example, a lot of the work we do enables linking through to journal articles. Now, um, those journal articles will be held within the library. The libraries will run the subscriptions with with the main journal publishers. But discovery can then occur through the library catalog, through the discovery mechanisms like, like Primo or, or EDS. Um, but very importantly, students then have the ability to take that journal article, actually download it, sideload it into one of their applications because they can, they can use online or, or offline applications and study offline. They can download that content and then actually have access to all the tools and capabilities within the platform. So although we're not providing the journal articles, the con we can still provide a consumption experience around that. And I think it's an area of focus for us to continually try to uh, facilitate better and easier access to the content, wherever it's coming from. Just, just to follow up on that, you, you mentioned about um, 206 countries content being accessed from 206 countries and obviously that international access is very vital to any MBA program and obviously is the subject of our of our webinar today but um, how, how does Cortex facilitate that from a licensing perspective and then also could you move on to talk a little bit about the, the security of student data because obviously you know we're living in now in a very um, dangerous world let's call it that and, and cyber and security is, is increasingly important could you just comment on those two things for us? 
Yeah, good questions. So for, for, first off, just in terms of the broad access, I mean, it's countries and territories. We're, 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 we're in the outer limits of, uh, of countries now. But the, the, the reality is, is that uh, through a, 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 a single point of access through the institution, we're able to manage the licensing into any of those countries and territories. It makes no difference. So, you know, from Oxford Brooks's perspective, uh, we have an arrangement, we provide that material, but any of their students, regardless of where they are in the world, can then access that content. So, so that works really well. Um, in terms of data and security, we, we, um, this, this is really important. Um, we formed a partnership some time ago with Microsoft. We, we work very closely with them. We're all their Azure cloud architected. Um, and what we've been able to do with them is very much focus on the, the European GDPR legislation. We can segment student data held and keep that in very specific geographic regions. Um, we then basically comply, or we have a, a, a full infrastructure, uh, infrastructure then around managing that and ensuring that that data is kept secure within that Microsoft uh, infrastructure, and then enabling uh, a, a very clear mechanism in terms of data provided back to the institutions. At all times, the, the individual student is the data subject as defined under GDPR legislation. And obviously they have the rights over their data as to what they do with it, um, removal of it, et cetera. So we, we have a very clear framework and you know, we've got hundreds of universities now uh, uh, signed into a, a, a very clear structure around the management of that data. None of the data, exists in the U or, or resides in the US. And quite specifically, one of the reasons we partnered with Microsoft was it falls outside of um, the whole aspect of the US Patriot Act and an ability for US federal authorities to get data without actually even having to inform the, the, the user that their data has been requested. So you know, we, we, we feel we feel really good about how we've we've constructed that set of mechanisms, both technologically and from a legal framework, too. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, Diana, you, you mentioned and I really like this connect, collaborate and create as the sort of the values of the course. And I'm particularly interested in collaborate. Um, Obviously, you know, we're a content provider and there's some collaboration tools within our platform, but I just wonder if you could just uh, elaborate on that collaboration that uh, almost how that person within Oxford, who's doing the MBA, and that experience of that person in Nova Scotia doing the MBA, how that experience is so similar. Okay, good question, Robin. And it's, they, I think the experiences are both similar and as different as they need to be because the students are all in very different circumstances. So, for example, we can have incredibly, you know, we, we can have people who are based in Oxford but are constantly traveling, and somebody in in that sort of Singapore who's home based and can engage much more. So it's the collaboration. Therefore, is is a mixture of getting students to be to, well, together virtually at the same time, um, but then sort of online and uh, engage with each other and with the materials provided. But a lot of that collaboration is also asynchronously, which is partly much more where all the materials also come in. So because they've got that same platform, they are provided with suggestions with read this, have a look at this, and then come here, come here in our discussion forum and talk about the relevance of this particular way of looking for this case study for your particular organization and um, discuss that as, as a group. So somebody makes a statement, somebody else will say, well, I agree with that, but my experience has been quite different. Um, and so those are the sort of key aspects of the collaboration. Um, and including also things like 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 webinar activities, but also group work. So working collectively, collaboratively on, on on problem solving. Excellent, thank you, Andrew. I just wonder if you could just pick up on that and talk to 
uh, within the Cortex platform, how that collaboration is facilitated around, you know, a, a, an individual book or an individual piece of work? Sure. Yeah. So I think it's pretty, pretty evident. Um, and I'll emphasize it again. You know, a lot of the um, curation workflows and user journeys that we're trying to do are specific to book and content that are surfaced through the Cortex platform, but then we can provide a space off the Cortex platform to reference that material and then share with either, you know, academic to, to class or peer to peer sharing around that particular bit of material um, to, to drive deeper discussion and capture those thoughts in, in that virtual world to, to kind of help with both the online and offline kind of experience is one common place to be able to interact. So it's a general strategy, we do that. And there's various points of our, you know, technology stack that allows us to kind of enable that uh, for students and various tools and integration points that we can surface that information to. So it's not just always in the Cortex platform, but it can be then extrapolated outside um, in certain areas like using some of the Microsoft tools and technologies, being able to copy and reference uh, links to, to pages in specific areas and push notes into things like OneNote as well. So there's other areas where students can start leveraging the information they amass through the, uh, the learning process and then collaborating amongst their peers. Excellent. Um, just uh, for the audience, if you guys got any questions, please put them in the chat and I will happily ask them on, on your behalf. But um, uh, James, I was just thinking about um, some of the features and functionality that Andrew uh, presented. Um, it, it feels like Cortex is moving towards a really sort of integrated, seamless platform. And I know, you know, from feedback from universities and students in particular, that, that with other platforms, that's been a frustration that they've, there's so many different places they need to go to uh, to find content. So can you just talk about Cortex's vision from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, I, th I, th I think it's this, um, there was a, in the UK, uh, there, there was a recent accessibility study um, done from a, a, a group aligned to GIST, which is a, a, a national body that supports um, university infrastructure. And there were upwards of, the content was consumed on upwards of over 440 different platforms. Um, it, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. And if you, if you think about students trying to navigate, the whole point of a, of a key program, like an MBA program, is you are going to reference and utilize a lot of resources from a lot of different areas. And you know, if, if you're trying to navigate through that content, and um, particularly if you're remote and, and overseas across multiple different user interfaces, you, you, you're just not going to get a particularly good experience. And so I, I, I think we see um, an ever evolving path to try to make that as seamless as, as possible and provide that tool set that enables you to engage with that content. And again, just coming back to an earlier point that we made, um, yes, we provide a lot of content, but we don't provide it all. So can we then help um, the students bring that other content into an environment where they can have that, that the access to that same tool set? And we, we've done that within our mobile applications, and you know, we, we will be doing that in the online applications as well. So I, I, I think that the when you think about... Uh, a learning experience, all of those things become really important. Access to the content, utilization of it, connectivity to the peers, um, how the individual academics want to use it, in that some academics will manage chat through their VLE, um, you know, be it Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, um, even using Microsoft Teams. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, we have to be interoperable with all of those different mechanisms to try to create that seamless user experience. And, and ultimately that's what it comes down to. And that, you know, that has real value from a, from a, a user's, a student perspective. So th those are the areas we're really focused on. Excellent, thank you, James. Right, I've got a couple of questions from the audience. Thank you for that team. Um, so Diana, you mentioned custom books. What are these and how did you develop them for your modules? Okay, yeah, um, good question again. Um, so custom books tend to be, so we've got actually two different types. So one of them is um, a, 
book that's particularly created by the, the module tutor and a series of, uh, of chapters from that end. And um, more usually the custom books are books that are um, a mixture of chapters from different published books. So on our program, and I think it's the case on, on lots of MBAs, modules aren't particularly structures around functional areas. They're often more holistic and therefore um, it's quite difficult sometimes to find core textbooks that are fully relevant and contain all of the core materials. So we then sometimes go to uh, pick and mix basically from different published books to create a, um, a custom made book. Lovely, thank you. Um, we've got five minutes, four minutes left, and I've, um, there's a few really interesting questions come through. So I'll rush through these a wee bit, but I think this one really comes from the heart. Um, to Diana, also Andrew, how does training engagement for faculty work uh, to make sure they're comfortable with the platform and don't go rogue and encourage cohorts to purchase print books? Diana, can you take that one first? <laughs> oh dear, okay, yes. No, it's, um, I, I don't think we've got the problem with the, the um, yeah, encouraging of print books, but yes, it's, so we, we provide training for the students in, in the induction. So we clearly explain how that works. Um, we've got um, uh, an MBA program information Moodle page where, again, where there is a section with all the information on how, how they should engage with Cortex and, and how that all, how that all, all works. Um, we do get students asking. I don't, I'd, I'd prefer to get the, um, the, the printed version. Can I swap that? Um, and we just basically say no, because the, the, the perspective from our, from our perspective, it's about providing that shared learning experience that's equal across however somebody approaches it. Um, and therefore, across the, plat the, the tutor group, it's not encouraged. Um, in terms of the, 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 the other training is, we have actually had team training by people from, from Cortex coming to talk to us to, and, and, and the tutor team and doing some hands-on stuff with, this is what you can do and this is how you could um, enhance that. And we then um, include that in further program development activities. So we, we tend to then, you know, make decisions as in, we want everybody to do this, each module tutor should do this, and here are some other options you can also do. Yeah, and I, th I think I'll take that one for Andrew, actually, because it sort of sits under me. In terms of that faculty, you can see the, you know, the fantastic um, uh, attributes that the platform is now developing for um, lecturers and for teachers. And, and we do recognise that that re will require some onboarding. So in terms of that faculty training, that is something we are going to focus on in the next six months, um, because I think, you know, there's some, there's some great tools there that, that can and should be used. And we need, we need to onboard, um, you know, the faculty in terms of using those tools. Um, just a couple to, I've got one more question and then we'll finish. So I will ask, uh, I think I'll ask, Diana, as our guest on this one, do you regard the future as blended or hybrid? And I don't know if it, um, the other two have an answer. Oh, this is blended a long or hybrid. We need I know, I know more it's than a, one minute. minute. <laughs> so, from my perspective, I think hybrid, actual hybrid, often ends up as being the worst of both worlds rather than the best of both worlds. I think you have to learning experience have to design from the, the student experience perspective. And having people both in a classroom and online at the same time means that it's, it's very difficult to engage with both sets of groups um, adequately and, and appropriately. Um, so I'm more, I'm more of a blended uh, person in that respect, because then you can really optimize the learning experience, both online and face-to-face, -face, and you can make meaningful element on online elements for students who are taking uh, on campus classes. Excellent. Thank you for that. So just to uh, finish off, David, I just wondered if you could put up our final poll and then I'll just uh, I'll just sum up. Absolutely. The poll is 
online now. So the, the final question is, as a result of the information provided in the webinar today, is the provision of learning content to students via Smart Study Platform on your course? <laughs> so I'll just leave that up for a couple more seconds. Great, thank you, everyone. So you can see the results there. 75% are saying more likely. That's excellent. <laughs> well, done. well done, everyone. Okay, I just want to share my screen for one more time. And I've literally got one more slide if you if you will bear with us. And um, just in terms of talking about integration, obviously PowerPoint is now totally integrated in Teams. So trying to make it work in Zoom is actually a lot harder than it used to be. So um, I've just got this final slide. So. Um, I think ultimately, this is about the student and if I can get this to, and this is uh, something just we're working with Aston and the Aston MBA program and we have been for the last uh, year or so. And, and this was from the, or the last couple of years, and this is from uh, their postgraduate taught survey. And I, and I just sort of want to read this word for word. And, um, so the feedback was, I think that the access to reading materials through Cortex has been available online, has been instrumental in my success in the course so far. I tend to do a lot of my writing late at night when I have a clear head and being able to access these resources on demand has really helped me. If these had not been available, I have no doubt that I'd not be succeeding on the course in the way that I am. And I just wanted to finish on that slide to really say that, um, you know, the, the cohort of students that we're now dealing with are looking for, you know, a seamless integrated experience. They're looking for, you know, the materials they need at, at the touch of a button. And with Cortex, working with your MBA program, as we have done with Oxford Brooks and many more MBA programs, that I think you can really work with us to make a difference to that student experience and ultimately drive that student success and that success in life. So one final thing, we'll, we'll send out the recording of this uh, webinar. We'll also just put a link into um, just to a demo request, because I think it'd be really useful just to be able to take you through on a one-to-one -one basis the platform and how the platform works and how the platform could uh, to work for your MBA program so so thank you very much for the hour that you've you've spent with us we really appreciate it and we hope to be talking to you all very very soon so thank you very much thank you Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you once again to our panellists for a fantastic conversation. And um, before we go, just to remind you that, yes, the, the webinar was indeed recorded. So if you missed anything or wish to refresh your memory, um, we will we will be sending across the full recording um, with that link that Robin mentioned within about a week. Thank you once again to Cortex for their amazing support for this webinar, to all our panellists for their insights, and to you for asking such great questions and for joining us. Thank you all and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Diana.